Hi, in a previous video titled Upgrading Your Tension Calibrator, I shared with you how your stringing machine is only as good as your tension calibrator. In today's video, I'll share with you how your string job is only as good as your string clamps. All right, let's go inside. All right, so before we get into it, I did want to talk about stringing machines. The three main qualities of a good stringing machine is one, you want something that'll mount the racket securely. In today's video, I'll be demonstrating this uh, on a two-point mount of Prince Niels 1000. But uh, if I had a choice between a two-point or a six-point mount, I would choose a six, just for the fact that it does securely hold the racket, I think, in place better. Uh, the second quality that you want is a machine that will hold tension consistently. And again, if I had a choice, I would pick a constant pull or a lockout over a drop weight, uh, just for the fact that I, I think it's more consistent. The third quality is you want a machine that'll have clamps that are fixed that will securely hold the string in place without crushing or damaging the string. So again, if you're de debating over a machine that has floating clamps or uh, something that's not fixed, uh, definitely go with something that's fixed on the turntable. And uh, swivel clamps, I think, in my opinion, works better because of the fact that you can angle it um, other than the 90 degrees that uh, the glide bars on a uh, Prince Neos 1000 can. All right, so now you have your machine, and once you use it for a while, you get a feel for what your clamps can or cannot do in terms of holding. So the adjustment itself will be based on feel. And there are four factors that you wanna consider when you're adjusting the clamps. And one, you wanna adjust it according to gauge. So if you're going from an 18 gauge to a 16, uh, you definitely wanna adjust it so it's not as tight for a thicker gauge, and you want it tighter for a thinner gauge. Uh, the second factor would be tension. So if you're going high tension, you definitely wanna uh, check for any kind of slippage uh, as, at the higher tension. So I would probably go a little bit tighter in your clamps just to make sure. And then a third factor would be um, the type of string. So if you're doing multi-filament or natural gut, uh, you wanna pay attention to how tightly the clamps are uh, uh, going down on the strings and you don't want to leave those white marks or any kind of indentation on the string so but yet you want to make sure the clamp is holding so uh, yeah you want to just there's a fine balance between those two and then the fourth is some strings have um, a high coating of that silicone um, and there's some strings and I can't think of the name right now it's not any of the strings that I have here so it must be something that was brought to me and I had to string. But uh, yeah, so if you get strings that are coated, let's say if it's this one, um, I would actually wipe it down before I, I would string, um, start stringing a racket. And uh, yeah, it's just to make sure that you don't have to deal with that. And what really makes your clamps slip is uh, all that buildup on the, the those type of strings that have that kind of coating. All right, so we're gonna get into uh, checking clamp slippage now. All right, so I have the racket mounted here. And before I pull the first main, I did want to mention that I'm going to assume that your clamps are cleaned. So we're starting off with uh, nice clean clamps. So we are going to check for string clamp slippage. And uh, I did have to actually adjust my clamps really loose to add dramatic effect for this video. So uh, here we go. We're going to pull the first main and I'm going to go ahead and clamp. Now, uh, I am gonna show you how to use this miniature clothes pins, but uh, before that, I was actually using a, a vinyl coated or plastic coated paper clips, which works well, uh, because what you're gonna basically do is use that paper clip and put it right up next to the clamp. And when you release the tension from the tension head, you're basically going to check if there's gonna be any kind of space between the clamp and the paper clip. So if you look at that, you can already see that um, there's about a sixteenth of an inch right in this gap right here, close to an eighth of an inch really. So if you're seeing that kind of gap, then you know your string clamps are slipping and there's no way to really recover that once it's doing that. So what I would do at that point if I saw that is I would go ahead and re-tension that string, uh, remove the, release the string clamp and then let go of the tension. And then go ahead and adjust your clamps accordingly to make sure that 
there's no slippage uh, at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and re-tension this uh, main and go ahead and clamp. And this time I'm gonna, oh, the reason why I started using these miniature paper um, clothespins is that, uh, I mean, these sometimes will tend to just, if you accidentally just touch it, it just pops up. So uh, one day I found this lying around and said, what if I just use these little miniature clothespins? And uh, I'll provide a link below. Basically you can get it at Walmart, I found out, and uh, they have it there. So what you're gonna do is again, make sure that when you release the tension from the tension head you'll notice that there's no gap at all right now so um, i'm gonna go ahead and tension the next main on this side and just leave the paper i mean sorry the clothespin right there and i'm gonna go ahead and apply tension and yeah there's still no gap sometimes the slippage can be very gradual so this this uh, clothespin will you'll see a gap eventually when you when you're working on the next string. So yeah, I, I like to leave it there just to make sure you're checking to make sure it's not slowly creeping up on you. So I'll go release that tension and yeah, it's flush right now. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to the other side and start pulling the left side of the the racket. Okay, so I'm starting to pull on the left side of the frame and I'm going to go ahead and also install a clothespin on this clamp and again checking to see if there's any kind of uh, gap between the string clamp and the clothespin. There's nothing there right now. So I'm going to go ahead and string the second main. And you'll notice I did leave the original clothespin on that right side. And um, sometimes the slippage will be so gradual that you can't see it at first when you release the tension and you're, you know, you're checking it right now. But if you look at this side, uh, you'll notice that there is a gap now uh, where there wasn't a gap before. So sometimes it's so gradual that you'll see it after you... Um, when you're working on the other side. So again, if I see that, I'll just remove um, the tension from the string, um, not popping the clamps, but retensioning it, taking the clamp off and then releasing the string, the tension from the string. But now you got four strings that were pre uh, previously uh, pre-stretched basically. So what I will do at this point is uh, readjust the clamp that's slipping and um, I would adjust the, the reference tension down one pound just to kind of compensate for that. Now there's another method that you can use to avoid clamp slippage and I'll set that up. All right, so I'll show you an alternate method in avoiding string clamp slippage. If you get a business card and uh, what you wanna do is cut it into forts and I'm only gonna use two of the uh, pieces and you fold it in half and you're gonna insert it into your string clamp and basically it's going to avoid a little bit of thickness to the clamp, but it'll also add padding to the string when you clamp down on it. So this will allow you to actually clamp onto a string and not have to tighten your clamp like really uh, to the point where it's going to uh, crush crush or leave those white marks on the string. So, so that'll help for the mains. When you get to the crosses though, you can't use this uh, business card in there. So, but in most cases when you get to the crosses, the amount of uh, tension stress on the clamp is not as high. So usually you can get by without having the string, um, sorry, the business card in there. If it does slip, then you'll need to just make sure you just tighten the clamps and get it to the point where it's not slipping. All right, so let's say you use the business card in your mains and now you wanna check your crosses to make sure that your string clamps are not slipping. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the first cross and what you're gonna do is, uh, after you clamp down, you're gonna get your uh, clothespin, but you can't really fit it next to the clamp anymore. So what you have to do is just move it over to the next string so that it's uh, like so. Well, let me get it over this way. Well, let me go ahead and release the tension and I'll show it to you. So I got it right there. Um, 
and basically you're gonna check to see if there's any slippage now between the string the main string there and the clothespin which there's nothing there so I'm gonna go ahead and pull the second cross and after we do the second cross I mean that should be a good enough indication if your string clamps are gonna hold and uh, for the rest of the way so on this one in particular there's a string right there it's actually right next to the clamp but of course you're not going to put it next to the clamp so you have to put the clothespin right there up to that string and then when you release the tension again you're checking to see if there's any kind of gap which there isn't so if there was a gap there then you would have to uh, go ahead and retension that string release the clamp and then release the tension and then just uh tighten your clamp um, make sure you make that adjustment and then go ahead and retension those first two crosses and again you can drop it down one pound if you want to uh, compensate for those two strings being pre-stretched so um, having any kind of a gap between the strings let's say if it's even a sixteenth of an inch um, it could make about five pounds of difference in your string job so you really want to pay attention to that and make sure that your clamps are holding in today's video, I hope I shed some light on how your string job can only be as good as your string clamps. And you as a stringer can only be as consistent by checking your clamps for string clamp slippage. On a related topic, I plan to post a sequel video called String Clamp Drawback and how you might be able to remedy this issue. I will be posting it on the IART website. And as a premium member, you'll be able to follow my journey as I dive deeper on this topic. Thanks for watching, happy stringing, and let your strings play.